In this video, we're going to create a part drawing from this previously created part. We have a couple angled views that we need to make sure we account for, so we're going to focus on creating auxiliary views. Let's go up to our file menu and make a drawing from part. I have a template saved as an ANSI B inch, and it's a landscape, so I'm going to choose that. We're going to start by just selecting that top view from the view palette. And I'm going to place that as the base view over in this top left corner. It will start automating some of these projected views. And to get out of this, you can just press escape. The projected view creates a standard view, but we want to create an auxiliary view that's not standard from the base view. Go over to your view layout and you should have auxiliary view. If you don't, you can add it by going to your view toolbar. We'll select that and it asks for a reference edge to continue. We're going to choose this front edge here for our view. Click your view and uncheck the arrow and that should finalize that auxiliary view. Hit escape to get out of that menu. We can now go to the model view toolbar right here and we can select an isometric view. So make sure that you have your part selected. We'll click isometric and I want to make sure that I select hidden lines removed down here. I can now place my isometric view over on this right side. And those three views give a pretty good detail of uh, the part so far. We can get the measurements off this flat view and we can get isometric 3D view and we got the total top view. We're going to import a lot of the uh, dimensions but before we do that we want to change the uh, position of one of the reference planes so in the model items command we'll use the mid plane to locate the the angular dimension since we drew this part on mid planes I'm gonna go back to my part and I want to make sure that this angled plane here is visible so I'm going to show that to make sure that it's a little longer you can adjust the size of the plane and you may need to manipulate your object a little bit but I'm going to stretch out the angled plane so that it covers the whole part I would save at this point And then I'm going to switch back to my, my drawing here. Now, when I go to select model items, I can find that midpoint. So go to annotations and click model items. Drop down to make sure that it says entire model. And we're going to import into all views so that way all three of these get dimensions. Under dimensions, we're gonna click marked for drawing and check eliminate duplicates. So that first one and then eliminate duplicates. We'll click okay and look at the dimensions that it produces. For this first one, we're gonna change the scale to three, two. So scroll down to use custom scale. And if 3.2 isn't listed, you can type it in. To reposition this view, just get the four corners. We're going to zoom into the top view. And notice how you got that 30 degrees here from that mid plane. We're going to right click on the R.25 radius and hide that. And 
And we're also going to only have a diameter for one of our holes, and this will assume similar geometry. I'll pan over to the auxiliary view, and we can start manipulating a lot of the dimensions that kind of got cluttered here. And it might be good to change some of your uh, leaders and dimensions. These ones inside here, you can change the leaders by pulling out or just going to your leaders tab and making sure you select outside dimensions like that. Adjust your annotations as needed. And if you have any that you don't need, now's a good time to to hide them. On this auxiliary view, it's important to note that our tangent edges are displayed. So we can right click and go to tangent edge and say tangent edges removed. That will clean up a lot of those unnecessary lines. The center lines were added with auto insert as a property. If you want to adjust these, feel free to do so, or you can delete and add in your own center lines. You click on this center line where it says use document defaults. You can always change your mark size to something a little smaller, like 75 thousandths, and check extended lines. We can do the same with the other circles here. One of the last steps we need to think about are lining up these drill holes, and we can put a center line in between these. We'll click the center line tool, and we'll select two edges, and we can select two edges. If you need to adjust the endpoints, you can. The last step here is to right click our sheet, go to properties, and we can enter 3, 2 as the scale. That should change our title block to have the scale equal 3, 2. If you look at the isometric view, that has now changed. And if you want to change that view, you can change the custom scale here. If it says view scale, you can always hide that. The last thing I'm going to do is change this to a shaded with hidden edges, and that'll give this a final look. Please make sure you go into your sheet format, right click your sheet and click edit sheet format. And you can change all of your options down here. And if you need to, you can always go to your properties and add in your new list to make up. Try to add in your company name, drawn by, drawn date, and you can just type those in and they will appear once you update and there we go so make sure you fill in all of these and make sure it's a full title block from here the last thing that we'll do is you may have noted that we took away the fillet radius and we'll just add that into the comments so you can go to a note, place it in the comments, and then here we can write rounds and fillets are 0 0.25. And that should cover that. Select your text and make sure it fits the size that you're looking for.
should cover all basis for getting this drawing set up. You can rebuild to make sure that you're at the latest version. And once you're done editing your uh, sheet format, feel free to go back to editing your sheet. Don't forget to save when you've completed.